you have seen the equation of lines many times in your life. In two dimensions, for instance, there was y equals mx plus b, or another way to write it was y minus y naught is m times x minus x naught. But both of those two different equations of lines were equations of lines in two dimensions. So we want to see how can we use vectors to write down equations of lines in three, or in fact, any number of dimensions. And in fact, in this video, we're going to have three different formulas to describe equations of lines in three dimensions. So let me draw just some random line that I'm going to put down, like perhaps that one. And if I want to describe this in terms of vectors, one thing that I can do is I can imagine putting a vector, which is just right down here on top of the line. And I'm going to call, in fact, that vector the vector v. The only problem is that this, this vector v, if I just tell you that, it doesn't tell you what line it is, because we know that we can move vectors around, and this vector, and this vector, and this vector, all of those other ones are all just sort of equivalent copies to the vector b. So if I really want to specify that I'm on my line, if I want to tell you how do I get to my line, I can give you some set of instructions that begins at the origin and tells you where to go. For instance, we could begin down here at the origin, and I could go out some other vector that places me on the line, and then once I am on the line, I go down the line by this vector v. So I'm going to call this the vector r naught, r sub zero. So this is kind of like if I want to tell you that you don't want to drive down the highway, there's two things you have to do. First of all, you have to get on the highway, that's the, the vector r naught. And then you can drive down the highway as long as you wish in this direction of the vector v. So for instance, if I wanted to go out to some point like say this one right up here, the way I could do that is I could go onto the highway, I could take the r naught, and then I could, I could take a stretching of that vector v. I could go out and amount t times v, some t that stretched the v vector, that was me going down the highway as far as I wished. And so what I'm going to say is therefore that r is equal to the initial amount, r naught, the, the part that requires me to get on the line. And then I can go down the line some amount t times the vector v. And this here is my vector equation of the line. And if I want to, to draw it, if I think about vectors added tip to tail, it represents the vector that starts at the origin and goes right out to the tip, to the edge of this triangle, the long side of the triangle. Let me copy in down that formula one more time. It was that r is equal to r naught plus a parameter t times v, where I'm thinking that the parameter t is just some real number. It tells me how long the line I'm going. However, this equation that I have can, can really be thought of as splitting up into three other equations, because a vector equation is the same thing as saying that the first components of both vectors are equal, and the second components of both vectors are equal, and the third components of both vectors are equal. So if I label these vectors, I'll say that vector r is the vector with components x, y, and z. The vector r naught is the vector with components x naught, y naught, and z naught. This is sort of a, I put the naught there to denote that it's an, an initial point, an initial vector. And then for the vector v, uh, maybe I will give this names a, b, and c. So then if I look at my vector equation and I think about breaking it up into three different scalar equations where I look at each component separately, the first component of r is just going to be equal to x. And the claim is that is the first component of r naught, which is going to be x naught, plus that scalar t and then the first component of v, which is going to be equal to a. So that's what the first component does. Looking at the second components, I'm going to get y is equal to y naught plus the scalar t times b. And finally, z is going to be equal to z naught plus the scalar t times c. So in other words, the vector equation has been broken up into parametric equations, plural, where each of the three depend on that same parameter t. And the t is the same thing for all three of them. There is yet a third way to describe the equations of lines. Let me go and take a look at the first of these. I could rearrange this equation for t. So let me do that. 
I'm going to say that t is equal to x minus x naught, and I'm going to divide out by a. I could look at the second of the two of these, and I could do the same thing. I could rearrange for t. I say y minus y naught divided by b is equal to t. And then I can look at the third of them, and I can say that z minus z naught divided by c is equal to t. So I have three different things. All of them are equal to t. And so what I'm going to come up with is something called symmetric equations, where I set all three of these different things, which are all equal to the value of t, just equal to themselves. That is, symmetric equations is saying that x naught minus x divided by a, that was one of the versions of t, has to equal y minus y naught divided by b, that was the second of the two, and then this is going to be equal to z minus z naught divided by c. And that writing these symmetric equations is basically equivalent to writing the parametric equations, which is basically equivalent to writing down the vector equation. So I'm not really doing anything fundamentally different. I'm just trying to write out the equation of the line from that same original picture. I just have three different presentations of it. Okay, so let's look how this works in a specific example. I have a point, 1, minus 3, 2, and note that I use curve brackets, round brackets, because it's a point, not a vector. I'm saying I have some line, and it goes through that point. And then I say that it's parallel to the vector 4, minus 2, minus 1. And here I am using my triangular brackets because it is a vector. Now, the claim that it is parallel to this 4, minus 2, minus 1, that tells me which direction I'm going. And then the claim that it has to go through this point, that tells me that initial vector. This tells me that my r naught vector is equal to the vector 1 minus 3, 2 that goes from the origin out to the end point, round brackets, 1 minus 3, 2. And that once you are on the line, you go in this direction. You go in the direction of v equaling 4 minus 2 minus 1. So then if I want to write down what my equations are, if I want to do it in vector form, it's going to be the vector r is going to be equal to 1 minus 3, 2, that initial vector, plus a constant t in the direction vector 4 minus 2 minus 1. But perhaps I would like to do it instead parametrically. So I'm going to try to figure out what my parametric equations are going to be. Well, in this case, there's going to be three of them. And I'm going to look at them component by component. So the first component is going to be that x is going to be equal to the value of 1 plus this constant t times 4. So that was me looking at the first component there and the first component there. Then I'm going to look at the second component. So I'm going to say that y is equal to minus 3, that's the initial vector, plus t times minus 2. And finally, z is going to be equal to 2 plus t times the third component, which is minus 1. So there I have my parametric equations. And then finally, if I want to look at my symmetric equations, so here I'm looking at x minus x naught, so minus 1, divided by a, which is 4. That was reading off this first equation, x minus x1 divided by the a value of 4. I'm then going to say that this is equal to y minus y1, which is minus 3, so it's going to become y plus 3, all divided out by b, which is my minus 2. What I was doing here was y minus 3 divided out by the minus 2. And then finally, I want to say that this is equal to z minus the first component, which was 2, and all divided out by minus 1. And so there I have my symmetric equations, my parametric equation, and equations, and my vector equation.